that actually is? That's a residual. Um, so, so after five years, you're paying back 60% of the loan? No, it's actually the reverse. So after five years, the balloon or residual of the debt is still 40% of the amount you financed. Similar to uh, the way you'd finance a motor car. So, 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 maybe then, so, so you paid off 60% of the debt after five years, you've still got 40% of the residual? Correct. Yes. Now you can uh, facilitate a debt five years nil, so you can fully pay for the boat over that five years, but it does change the dynamics. Your monthly payments will go up quite significantly because you're paying principal down of 100% of that amount financed over five years, as opposed to the other circumstance where you're paying 60% of it down and then rewriting it. It's probably no different to a home loan. People get 25-year home loans. They don't fully amortise the debt in five years because the size of the debt is just, just too difficult to amortise through. If you do that, you can get more, more losses earlier on because you've got higher, higher interest compared to the model. How far, how far forward can you carry those losses? The, the losses can be carried forward until such times as they're utilised, yeah, both against your assessable revenue or against the boat's revenue itself. Yes, but, but your comment's an interesting one. You're, when, you do a, when you truncate your debt, so if you facilitated your debt over five years with no balloon, it would increase your cash flow requirement significantly because you're amortising 100% of that debt. But it actually reduces your interest cost because your balance is coming down so rapidly that the interest on the remaining balance is much less. So interest only obviously has a much higher interest cost than five year fully amortising. Because one year into a five year, you're, at, you're down to 80% of your debt already, if that makes sense, to go through. Having looked at the business model, I think it's imperative that you need to have an understanding about the cash flow ramifications and also the potential tax ramifications. This spreadsheet, and, and if you can imagine, all of these spreadsheets link. Whatever information you put into the front boilerplate of this, whether that be zero finance, whether that be um, a $300,000 charter boat or a, or a million dollar charter boat, simply populates through to these spreadsheets. So in this instance, we're seeing a boat financed, a $563,000 boat, financing with a $112,000 uh, deposit, $450 to finance over five years with a residual or a balloon at the end of that initial five-year period of $180,000, and that's incurring about a $6,600 per month cost, and we'll cover some annualised costs in a moment down the bottom. At the end of that initial five-year frame, you can see that residual of 180 being refinanced over a four-year by nil period, where your payments drop down to around 4,400 per month on prevailing rates. These spreadsheets have been calibrated to an interest rate of 7.95%, which is fixed rate funding for the five-year program, and it's secured by the boat itself. It's not a real estate-based uh, debt structure. Is that, is that the maximum you can? So I'm, I'm still intrigued by the 40% of the loan. Yes. You can't find it over 10 years straight away? or No, no you can't. And, and it's not so much a case of um, a debt circumstance where, where the exposure is any greater concern to a funder. It's more around fixed rate funding. It's very difficult to get 10 year fixed rate funding as a proposition, just because of the money markets. So. This really does give you a nine-year fully amortising debt, and you could easily have it as a 10-year fully amortising debt. You could easily have it as a 10-year debt with still a balloon at the end. So you could take that residual value and you could refinance that on a five-year term, again with a balloon of 40 or 50%, and, and amortise it perhaps over 15 years. But, but you can't do it in one single tranche. You, it's restricted more by the fixed rate funding limitations. So I guess I'm interested in it, compared to say, using your house as, as collateral for the and, and using that debt over 10 years at the same interest rate, what, what's the better model? Is this, is this a more advantageous model? No, no. The same. On the contrary, I, I, would, I would suggest to you that if you have the available equity in your real estate, that that is a more efficient model than actually encumbering the boat through a debt structure. Um, at the moment, we're looking at variable rates on home loans of about five to five and a half percent. The fixed rate loans for home loans are, are up a fair bit, but they're not at eight percent. Um, and we are expecting um, to see the RBA rate start to ratchet up fairly rapidly once we get to the other side of this economic circumstance. So it's um, forward estimates. We'll put our RBA rate between five and six percent within eighteen months to two years. As soon as we see a glimmer of recovery in the economy 
they'll be putting the brakes on because they'll be very fearful of inflation because of our very low home loan rates and the, uh, the incentives that have been put in place so far. So the first sets of numbers really just show you what the debt is, if you like, out on this hypothetical gearing level. I'll really just brush through the, the next two sections very quickly because it's really statistical information which talks about what the average daily hire rate would be on um, those sorts of gross revenues, the percentage of the active test in the private use component that you have in both your business plan and your tax return. The next section really looks at what is this return? I think Brent had said in one of his earlier comments that they expect to see a 7 to 9% return on capital for these charter boats. And you can see this spreadsheet showing about an 8% return being a $46,000 net return on a $562,000 asset. The most critical part of these spreadsheets are really the next section. Now many of us would have uh, investment properties and within, when you do have an investment property within your personal tax return, you will have one page per property that shows your gross revenues, your expenses, your net income, whether that be a profit or a loss. And this is no different for a charter boat. There's a specific coding within your tax return for charter boats and you would have a profile of a tax return which would show a gross revenue which is uh, showing there on line 53 of 138,000. And then we go back up to the top of the screen, you can see there, and we take away that from the, we take away from that the costs, which are the holding costs of 14, the estimated actual use costs at 77, the interest component on this particular debt structure that we've geared it to of 25, the depreciation. I need to spend a moment here to explain that the majority of people who buy charter boats would fall into what they call the small business category. That means that they have a turnover of less than $2 million per annum. So they're either going to be an employee or they're going to be a small business owner, but the group turnover of their organisation that they control and own 40% or greater in is less than $2 million. Under that system, you have available to you what used to be called the Simplified Tax System, which is the STS, and it's now called the SBE re regime, which is small business enterprise and that allows you to place to actively elect to place your business assets into a pool and provided they have an effective life of less than 25 years you can claim a depreciation rate of 30 percent diminishing value all of your assets must go in the assets of the business and so often with a charter boat buyer that's really the asset that they have they may be an employee in another world but their main uh, business asset is the actual charter boat. So you need to actively go into that pooling provision. The, the simplified tax system is exactly as it sounds. In the first year, there's no pro rataing You simply get half of that depreciation year one. So the number you see up there at $84,000 in line 48 is in fact 15% of the capital value of the boat. The number you see to the right of that, which is 143, is 30% of that remaining balance as you move into full years. And then you see it cascade down to 170 and 49, etc. The line below that is simply your total expenses, it's addition of all the above numbers. However, as you have calibrated your business plan in your accounting sense around what is my private use, what's it expected to be, you need to treat your private use in the same methodology for your tax return. So we're really seeing here as a tax return outcome that $17,000 worth of the boat related expenses are being reversed out as non-business related and we end up with an adjusted total of 184 year one, 238 year two, etc. Take away the revenue of 138, it means that in year one this boat's showing a tax loss of 46,000, in year two it's 100, in year three it's 60. Now as you can see, the majority of that tax loss really comes about because of this very high level of depreciation. The, the business model, we know the decline in value of the boats, it's really just the facts and circumstance around tax planning and prevalent, uh, prevalent depreciation rates within the simplified tax system. The number you see next to it is obviously what uh, has a lot of press at the moment, which is around this investment allowance. And, and this investment allowance showing at 50%. Now I just want to take a moment on this to, to uh, cover a couple of comments to you. It's really essential that number one, that you recognise that what we provide to you today is our view on the industry. We've lived and breathed this for many, many years. It is imperative that someone who goes into a, an asset requirement of this level gets very thorough accounting and legal advice. And it, it is quite a tenuous or a difficult process because despite them being very good accountants out there, most of them are general practitioners. And they need to do a lot of research within to the rulings of the charter boat industry, 
from 2003, the amended legislation we had in 2007, and to understand the present budget circumstances.